Thames Link Core is the most advanced piece of railway in the country from a technology point of view. And we have some fantastic facilities to help us work through degraded mode working and POSA signals are one of those facilities. But we do recognise that that adds an extra layer of complexity for frontline teams, for drivers and for signalers. And so GTR and Network Rail have put this video together to help you folks who drive on the railway and who signal trains to really get to grips and understand how POSA signals work because we recognise that you won't always do it in your day-to-day -day duties. Hi, my name is Richard Pond, testing and commissioning driver for GTR. Uh, we're currently on the Upper Pilebourne Fast on the approach to Blackfriars. Um, we're going to arrive at Tango Victor Sierra 1070 signal. Uh, which is the last main aspect signal before uh, Blackfriars Platform 2 and then we are going to go through POSER operation. So we've arrived at Tango Victor Sierra 107 signal end of authority uh, with ATO engaged. We've le we leave ATO engaged, we don't set the DRA of course as, we, as, as, uh, as normal in full supervision. But as soon as the POSER signal uh, starts flashing we disengage ATO by moving the PBC to full service into neutral, set the driver as a reminder appliance, and now we're going to wait for on-site mode to be offered to us. Okay. So on-site mode, ETCS on-site mode is now being offered to us, as we can see by the ETCS uh, flashing ET, uh, uh, on-site acknowledge icon. Uh, we're going to um, press that to acknowledge. So we've now gone into on-site mode, so we were in full supervision, we're now in on-site mode. The planning area has disappeared. And at this stage, I just don't know how far my on-site um, authority extends to. Um, what I need to do now, and this is the bit that a lot of drivers uh, tend to forget to do, is I now need to tap my speedometer to get my permitted speed block. By tapping the speedometer, I get my permitted speed, but the highest speed it will be is 25 miles an hour. Um, and I've also got my distance to target. So looking at this now, I can see that um, I've potentially got an end of on-site authority in about 70 meters, uh, which in this case is likely to be the block marker just before Blackfriars Station. If I don't tap the speedometer, then I might as well put a blindfold in. I can't see how far my on-site authority extends to. Um, so I don't know where my end of on-site authority is without tapping the speedometer. Remember, when you enter on-site mode, the planning area disappears. The only way to find out how far your on-site authority extends to is to tap the speedo. You may get a distance to target bar, but if not, the speed block being above zero miles an hour is your authority to move until a distance to target appears. What I'm going to do now is we're actually on the approach to Blackfriars Station, so I'm inevitably going to be coming into Blackfriars Station quite slowly because I'm going to be going into, into on-site authority, possibly onto another on-site authority. So I don't know how far this on-site move extends for. So my, my progress up Blackfriars platform is going to be potentially quite slow. So I'm going to make a PA announcement to the passengers to let them know that we may potentially stop partway in the platform of Blackfriars before we move anywhere now. Good morning, this is your driver speaking. Uh, due to um, a signalling problem in the Blackfriars area, now we're going to have to be coming to Blackfriars station a little slower than we normally would do. And it's quite possible that we may stop part way in the platform before we progress all the way into the platform before I can open the doors. Be assured that we will be um, stopping at Blackfriars and the doors will be released so you can get off. Remember, it's important to let passengers know what's going on during disruption. Make regular PA announcements to keep them informed. So when we have the running poser working, we have to reduce the train service, which is obviously an inconvenience to our passengers and customers that are trying to get home across the network or into work. So when it's safe to do so, please do inform your passengers of what's happening and reassure them that they will be moving and they will be moving soon and that they're in a queue. And please do apologise for any disruption caused to their journey. OK, so I'm in on-site mode. I've tapped my speedometer. Um, I've got a permitted speed of just under 20 miles an hour now, distance to target is 70 metres. Um, so um, I'm going to reset my DRA. Driver, you have reset the DRA. Please check the signal. And of course the permitted speed block indicates the maximum speed I can go at, but I am, I am proceeding um, at caution, being able to stop in the distance I can see to be clear.
So it's getting that combination of now of being able to look out the window and ensure that the, the, uh, um, the track ahead of me is clear and also keeping an eye on, the, on my DMI uh, for my end of on-site authority. You can see that my permitted speed block is gradually coming down now. And as I, what, what's happening now is I'm approaching the proof clear ahead window for ETCS level two. I've got to the proof clear ahead window. The system decided to extend my on-site movement authority. Um, so my permitted speed block has um, increased to just under 25 miles an hour. So that allows me to continue in on-site mode. In this circumstance now, you can see that the mid-platform signal at Blackfriars is green, but you can see that my on-site authority is gradually reducing. It'd be very easy for me to look at that signal, think that that's my authority to continue into the platform, but it isn't. Uh, I'm in an ETCS on-site mode, and I have to go by my uh, degraded speed block and my ETCS on-site authority. So again, I'm just coming to that ETCS level two proof clear ahead window. And the system's now deciding what kind of movement authority to give me, if it's going to give me uh, any kind of authority. So you see that my on-site authority, my permitted speed block is now increased, has jumped up to 25 miles an hour, just under 25 miles an hour. So I'm still in on-site mode. Still going by my permitted speed block. So I've now gone back into ETCS level two full supervision mode. My planning area is returned. And by looking at my planning area and uh, my uh, speed hook, I can see that I've got enough movement authority to uh, continue into Blackfriars platform and then stop in the correct place. Remember your on-site movement authority is governed by the on-site speed block on your DMI, not by line side signals. You could trigger the train to enter ETCS trip mode if you forget to check your DMI. Okay, so we've safely arrived at Blackfriars. Um, in that circumstance, uh, poser operation, on-site operation, was actually offered whilst at a stand. And on Thames Link Core, that's what happens most of the time. There are occasions, though, where on-site may be offered to you on the move. And this is most likely going to be if you've had a poser signal on level NTC on the signal before you transition in or you've been authorized to pass the signal at danger in NTC on the signal before you transition into ETCS level two. In that circumstance, it's quite possible that um, you will um, transition in to on-site mode. When you do that, you again, you have to remember to make sure that you tap the speedometer to be able to see where your end of on-site authority is. Very easy to forget in the heat of, mo of the moment when you transition in, you've got to acknowledge on-site mode and then you've got to remember to tap your speedometer to be able to get your permitted speed block to be able to see where your end of on-site authority is. We know poser working doesn't happen regularly, so it's important to remember the lessons here. If you've got any further questions, ask the competency management team at Thameslink or Network Rail, because making mistakes in the Thameslink core can lead to big knock-on delays. There's a train every three to four minutes through the core most of the day and delays will escalate very quickly if we don't deal with the initial fault um, and it will mean that control will need to intervene to reduce and then recover train services. All of this means a disrupted journey for uh, the customers and more work for all of us on the GTR side.